Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, horror, I've got 10 great vampire books for you. So last week I did 10 great creepy atmospheric horror books. This week I'm doing 10 great vampire books. So I'm going to do each week um, throughout spooky season 2023 um, a top 10 of a different kind of horror book uh, each week. Um, I'll leave a link in the description to last week's video if you haven't seen that yet. Uh, And like last week I'm going to try and make this video 10 minutes long uh, and no more than that. So you'll get 10 great vampire books in 10 minutes. So without further ado let's crack on. The first one is the obvious one, uh, Dracula by Bram Stoker, which actually I'm rereading at the moment. Um, a fantastic book, a seminal horror novel. Um, it's And it's kind of exactly what you expect in that you know the story of, of Dracula already. Um, what you may not expect is for it to be so readable. So for a book of its age, it's incredibly digestible and gripping and fun. It's a really great vampire book um, and definitely worth reading if you haven't read it already. Um, next up we have an unofficial sequel to Dracula, um, Anno Dracula by Kim Newman, which came out in the 90s. This is a great concept for a book. So the, the idea of this book is that Queen Victoria, um, having been widowed when Prince Albert died, um, decides to marry again and she marries Dracula. So vampires become very much a part of um, like British Victorian society and it's about how that changes the world. Um, it's kind of a rip-roaring adventure style book as well, so very much leans back to that kind of Victorian style of adventure and horror fiction, uh, but just a really fun read and, and the first of a series of books that Kim Newman, um, who's also a film critic, so really knows his stuff when it comes to horror. Um, the first of a series of books he's written uh, set in the same universe. Um, next up, another British horror novel or vampire novel of a similar kind of vintage. Uh, so Vivia by Tanith Lee, which came out in the mid 90s. This is a really interesting and enjoyable and kind of luxuriant uh, vampire book that leans heavily into the kind of romanticism of vampires. So it's, it's kind of a blend of um, fantasy and, and horror rather than being a straight horror book. Um, but a very, a very much. So if you think about that kind of 90s, like new wave of, of vampire things where vampires were kind of mysterious and, and sexy, um, it leans very heavily into that, but because kind of got fairy tale elements and things like that built into it as well. So and a very different take on, uh, on, on vampires from the rest of the books I'm talking about today, but definitely a, an enjoyable one um, and an interesting one to, to check out. Next up we have what's probably the first great American vampire novel, um, I Am Legend by Richard Matheson, uh, which is set in in the futuristic year of 1976. So this is a book um, about a plague of vampires having taken over the world um, and one last man, the the narrator of the book, trying to to survive against them. So it's it's been famously filmed a few times, most recently, and not terribly successfully with Will Smith, um, but a, a really, really great book and considered by some to be the inspiration for the George Romero film Night Night of the Living Dead. So it's definitely a different style of vampire book in that it's it's kind of apocalyptic um, rather than being the, more the, the kind of Dracula style, um, but a, a fantastic book and definitely worth reading. Um, Next then, probably the second great American vampire book, Salem's Lot by Stephen King. I couldn't do a a top 10 vampire books without talking about Salem's Lot. So a really interesting book that takes the kind of vampire law and and injects it into modern America or 70s America. Um, So it's got that kind of typical King small town setting. It's got some some interesting characters within that town, including an interesting priest character. But it throws the kind of classic uh, vampire character into that mix and makes for a a really enjoyable, atmospheric, creepy horror novel um, that's still very entertaining to this day. Uh, You know, one of one of King's um, most respected works.
Next up, a couple of American vampire novels from the 80s. Um, I couldn't decide which one of these to pick, so I decided to go with both of them. Um, so the first is the book that's often credited with starting the Splatterpunk movement, uh, The Light at the End by John Skip and Craig Spector. Um, so just a, a fun, very graphic, fast-paced horror novel um, set in uh, the, the kind of New York underground um, about a, a bunch of teenagers who encounter vampires and, and what happens thereafter. But a fun, really fast-paced horror novel novel um, another one uh, of, a, of a similar vintage and with a similar setting so again set in new york um, is live girls by ray garton which is very graphic um, so about a, a a young guy who's kind of a bit of a waster um, who discovers this this uh, sex club in uh, time Times square um, and this is going back to the to the days of Times square being you know a very sleazy kind of red light area um, so he discovers this this club where the strippers are vampires and gets involved in the kind of whole underground world of, of vampires as a result. So very fast paced, very graphic, a bit dated in some of its uh, attitudes, um, but still a very fun and very cinematic um, vampire novel. So a, a fun one to check out. Um, Next is a book, another one from the 80s, which, which feels like an American uh, vampire novel, but is actually written by a Thai author. Um, and that is Vampire Junction by S.P. Somtal. Uh, so this is a really fun vampire book about a, um, a pop star, uh, Timmy Valentine, who appears to be a kind of... Uh, a kind of teeny bopper idol but is actually a centuries old vampire again the first in a series of books so there's a couple of sequels to this one um but and, and again very graphic so it leans heavily into the kind of sex and violence um end of the, the the vampire spectrum if you like um but a really fun engaging and very creepy at times um horror novel it's got definitely got elements of a kind of stephen king vibe to it in terms of some of, some of its small town settings that it uses um but yeah it it, it weaves together a load of different storylines um, all revolving around this Timmy Valentine character uh, which are really really enjoyable um, and then finally a couple of more modern or slightly more modern um, vampire books which are uh, both have a different very different take on on the, the kind of vampire concept so the first of those is a book i've talked about on the channel before throat sprockets by tim lucas sadly a book that's out of print and quite difficult to get hold of but a really interesting and creepy take on, on vampires so this is a book about a guy who discovers this this kind of rundown porn cinema that's showing this weird uh, movie called throat sprockets uh, which kind of fetish, fetishizes women's throats and he comes to believe that it's been made by vampires or, or is like made for vampires um, and it's about him investigating the origins of, of the film so I love kind of um, books about like cursed art and things like that which which this definitely is and it is also a really interesting study of kind of obsession so it, it feels quite like a Cronenberg uh, kind of movie at times not in terms of the body horror but in, just in terms of the single-mindedness of, of, of the characters going after something that they become obsessed with. So really interesting, definitely worth um, tracking down a copy if you can find one. Um, and then finally, a very new book. This only came out, I think, last year. Um, Woman Eating by Claire Coder. Um, which is a, a very modern feeling vampire book. So a book about a young woman um, who's a vampire who who is who is living on her own for the first time in London, um, and is just trying to figure out how she how she makes a life for herself basically. So how she balances her desires as, as a human young woman to uh, you know kind of have a normal life to go to art school and things like that but also how she balances that against her thirst for blood um, really interesting uh, it's got an, an interesting take on kind of aging vampires as well so her mother um, is also a character in this book and she's she's uh, someone who's in an old people's home so it mixes together a load of different things um, and does it really really effectively I had a, a very good time with this um, and as I say it's, it's very different from a lot of the other books I've talked about so if you fancy something that's uh, features vampires but is a slightly different take uh, this is definitely worth looking at so there we go i think i hit my 10 minute target um so i hope you've enjoyed this let me know if you've read any of the books i talked about let me know what your recommendations for vampire books are um, and as always thank you very much for watching hope you're safe and well out there hope you're reading good stuff and i'll speak to you again very soon cheerio